In this video I will cover how return values work in Muxed Fabric data pipelines and how you can use them to send information from a lower level pipeline to an upper level pipeline. Stay tuned! Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Muxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Muxed Fabric data engineering. In this video I want to talk about data pipeline return values. In many cases when building more complex data pipelines, you could have many layers of pipelines, meaning that you have a top level pipeline that will then invoke some lower level pipelines. In some cases you might have a need to pass information from a lower level pipeline to that top level pipeline and possibly do some following things in that top level pipeline based on that information. One example of this could be that you have a pipeline that will copy something using a wildcard and if there are no files copied you don't want to run following pipelines. With return values you can achieve this. For people more familiar with programming and functions, this return value should make quite a lot of sense, since you can think about one pipeline as one function that has a return value. But enough talking, and let's open up Fabric and check out how these return values work in action. Now I have the Fabric Data Factory experience open here. Let's start by creating our lower level pipeline and let's name this pipeline according to our naming conventions. So this is going to be the pipeline that we are going to invoke in the upper level pipeline that we are going to create shortly. But now let's add just set variable activity to this lower level pipeline. We have covered already in the previous videos how we can use the set variable activity to set pipeline variables. But there is another functionality to the set variable activity as well. And we can see that by opening up the settings tab. And here we can see that we can select the variable type. In this case we want to select the pipeline return value. And we can see what happens then. We can click that and then we can start to define pipeline return values here. This means that these values would be returned from the pipeline when the pipeline executes. Now let's define few return values here. Let's name them rv1, rv2 and rv3. And here we can see that we have plenty of different data types supported here that we can use for these return values. For example, we have string, then we have expression, then we have object, array, integer, float, boolean and null. We can for example use string value for this rv1 and right here this is a return value. And then for the rv2 we can add for example let's try the array return value. And here we can define the data that we want to be in our array. Let's put a to our first index, then b as our second index and then c as our third index. And then for the rv3 I can think we can take for example the expression. As you can see we cannot use the dynamic content for this string, string return value here but with this expression type we have this dynamic content available here. And we can just add a simple function here for example utc now function and return the value of that in our return value. Then we can click OK. Now we have set up three return values here and then we can run our pipeline by clicking run button. This will save and run our pipeline and now our pipeline is running and should finish very quickly since we are not really doing anything special here and it's already done. And then we can check the outputs of this set variable activity. We can see that we have here this value object and inside that we have all of those three return values available. At this point this reminds quite a lot of using just regular variables in the pipeline. But these values are a bit different since these are available as return values from the pipeline itself if we would execute this pipeline as part of another pipeline. And now let's create another pipeline. And let's find the data pipeline here and then we can name this pipeline according to our naming conventions and to this pipeline we want to add the invoke pipeline activity. And with this activity we can invoke another pipeline within this pipeline and this time we want to invoke the pipeline that we just created. And now we have set it up. So we have selected the invoked pipeline to be this pipeline that we just created. 
and now we can click run and let's see what happens when we do that. This should also finish very fast since we are not doing anything special here. And let's see it should be done fairly quickly and it's already done and now we can check the outputs of this pipeline. As we can see we cannot see the return values here that is that is in my opinion a bit bad and I would like to see the return values here in the pipeline output. Instead what we have to do we have to click this link here that points to the pipeline run ID and go there and check out the outputs here what happened. This is a little bit inconvenient and I hope Microsoft would do this in a bit easier fashion than this. But basically now we have invoked that pipeline and even though we cannot see here that we have those return values coming from that lower level pipeline, trust me they are there. And now we can add a bunch of set variable activities to this upper level pipeline and then use these to reference the return values that are coming from this invoked pipeline. Let's create those variables here var, var1 that has to be string and then var2 that was an array and then var var3 that is also a string because our utc now function that is coming here will give us a string value when it evaluates. But yeah now we can assign those variables here in the set variables activities to see how you can reference those return values. Let's assign the value var1 and let's assign it the value of rv1 here and then to the var2 rv2 and the var3 we are going to assign the rv3 value. But yeah let's assign their uh, value and when we open this dynamic content here we can see this invoke pipeline one activity output and here we have this return value available. We can click this but this would give us the entire return value that's coming in. We can just pick one out of those return values by typing a dot rv1 here. That would basically take the rv1 out of this entire return value here. Then we can click OK. To the second variable we want to assign the array that is coming from our return value that is from in rv2. And then to the third of course we want to assign the rv3. There we go. And now everything should be set up correctly here. So basically what's happening here, we are invoking that lower level pipeline that has some return values and then we are assigning those return values to variables here in the top level pipeline. And I'm just using these variables as an example here to show you how you can reference those activity or those pipeline return value outputs here. Basically you could just have a bunch of different logic based on those values that are coming from the lower level pipeline. But this is just a simple illustration. Now let's click run and let's see what happens. And now our pipeline is running and should finish very quickly since we are again not doing anything very special here just assigning some values. And now it is already done. So we invoked first the pipeline and then we had some return values coming from there that we can see by going to this lower level pipeline and checking this set variable activity. Here we have all those values so rv1, rv2 and rv3 and then in the top level pipeline we are assigning them to variable 1 and we can see what is the variable 1 output. Here it is this is a return value that's correct and then in the second variable we should have that array and yes we do and then in the third we should have a timestamp in UTC format and there we have it. But yeah this is how you would use return values in the pipelines to pass information from a lower level pipeline to a top level pipeline. I hope you now have an understanding how these return values work in Microsoft Fabric data pipelines. Also if you would like to learn more about Fabric check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.